So you might say that Allah sent him like a miftah, like a key yeah. to open my heart. Allah was there. Because his, in, his, in, his, his knowledge of Marxism was from books. Right. right. And it was great, yes. a great knowledge. Yes. But mine was only emotional. Right. And since his studying in Paris, he had returned to the deen of Islam, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. having found no consistency in the behavior of Marxists. Right. And no akhlaq, no true brotherhood among right. Marxist friends. Right. So at this particular party, I had no idea of any of this information. All I knew is that this was an African right. studying at MIT University, right. an intellectual from Africa. Right. And he addressed me and he said, you know, Henry Kissinger, uh -huh. this uh, American Zionist diplomat of yours, he's causing us many troubles uh -huh. in Africa and the third world. Uh -huh. And he said, you must make some sort of an effort as an American. Right. You must be responsible and try to help educate him and get him under control. Right. And I, at that point in my life, said to him, I said, uh, these type of people, they don't listen to words. Right. So you must right. answer them only with bullets. Uh -huh. If you shoot him, this is the way to do it. Right. Words won't help. Right. And he said to me, and Jaga said to me, he said, you're a very unusual American. Uh -huh. He said, I must come to your house and visit. I uh -huh. said, please, uh -huh. anytime. Come visit yes. anytime. Yes. So after one week, I was very surprised because he showed up at my front door and he came and spoke to me, only political discussion. Uh -huh. I offered him one cigarette and he smoked with me. Uh -huh. And the discussion was very intense and he was very aware of things that I had never even considered in terms right. of political science. Right. So I began to respect him greatly, but because his knowledge was about mine. Right. But he was a secret agent for Allah, you could say. For Allah. For Allah. Yes. He was Allah's secret agent, and yes. very intelligent. Yes. And not once in the conversation did he mention Islam, or Quran, or the word Allah, or Muhammad. Right, right. Because he knew if he had done that, I would have chased him right out of the right, house. Right, right. Your friendship would have been Finished broken, yes. Finished, initially. Right. But he only talked to me about political knowledge which was above mine until I respected him very much. Right. And after that first conversation, I said, this is a very knowledgeable Marxist from West Africa. Right. I must study with him. Right. I must even hum be willing to humble myself. Right. Right. Because his knowledge is above mine. Right. And if I don't, I may miss something. Right. So, uh, he came again after a week. Yes. And it, as, as the first time, I again offered him a cigarette. Yes. And he refused it. And I felt socially uncomfortable. So right. I said, why did you take it the first time this time? Is something the matter? You refused my cigarette today. You know, this psychology, if yeah. I may tell you, you know, this psychology is given to us in the Holy Quran. When those angels came to Hazrat Ibrahim, alayhi salam, you know, to give him the good news yes. about the brother of son. Exactly. Right. Now, he had prepared that fatted calf, yes. you know, for the guests. For the guests. And when they sat at the table, you know, he says, Bismillah, get started. And his other guests started, but the angels wouldn't put their hands into the food. So Hazrat Ibrahim salam, according to the Holy Quran, got terrified. He said, look, these people must be intending some harm. You know, when a man comes to your house, sits at the table, and refuses, and refuses hospitality. To eat, hospitality. Yes. So it worried me in this way, exactly. Exactly. Hit the nail on the, head. the angel said, he said, look, we are the angels of the Lord, and we do not eat. Yes. That is the reason. This food here, physical sustenance is not for us. They get their spiritual food from God, the nourishment. So that type of an analogy happened in your life. Exactly. Yeah. And so at that point he said to me, he said, you know, I'm not like you. I right. can take the cigarette or I can leave it. Right. But you, you're a slave of the cigarette. Right. You must have it right. to maintain your peace of mind. Right. So I thought that this personal, this discussion of personal politics was very interesting. Discussion right. of personal politics. And uh, again, he continued to have with me strictly a, a discussion of political science. Right. And it wasn't until the third visit yes. that something really interesting began to happen. Because right. in the middle of the third visit, after another week, right. he came and began to speak with me more political talk. Right. And he said to me, look, Brezhnev, the leader of the Soviet Union, yes. is a collector of fancy automobiles. Uh -huh. he has, yes, he has Ferraris, right. Cadillacs, uh -huh. Mercedes-Benz, uh -huh. Rolls-Royce. Uh -huh. Is this... Is he really following the example of proletarian uh, brotherhood? Right. And I said, no, he is a, a hypocrite. He right. is also a monopoly. Right. So he began the discussion, and it was really interesting me very much. But in the middle of our discussion, uh -huh. he said, excuse me, uh -huh. may I go upstairs and use your bathroom, uh -huh. and your washroom facility? Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I said, please, Njaga, help yourself, right. go upstairs. Right. But after a few minutes, uh -huh. I began to hear Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, Ashadu Allah Muhammad Rasulullah. Yes. And 
The I knew. Azan. Yes, the Azan. The and from Hollywood, or from wherever I picked it up, right. I knew that this was Islamic religion. Right. Islamic deen. And I was very disturbed. Right. Of course. <laughs> On top of your head. On top of my head. Yeah. And I said, how can this man, so as intelligent as this man, yes. be involved in such childish activity right. as this right. praying in religion? Right. And when he walked down the stairs, I confronted him at the bottom of the stairs. Uh -huh. And I said, my friend, you are really wasting your time. Right. I've heard what you're doing upstairs, right. is praying or something. Right. And you must stop this, it's garbage immediately. Please stop praying. <laughs> yes. I said to him, how can a man so intelligent as yourself be wasting your time like this with prayers? Yes. When you know better. Right. And you, you, know, to, you ought to know better. And you better. ought to know better. And you should know that all religion is the opiate. Right. The opium of the people. Right. How can you be praying? And I said, your mother in right. Africa must have brainwashed you. Yes, yes. But even that is not an excuse. Because right. a man so intelligent as yourself has no excuse to be brainwashed right. by an old woman. Right, right. I said, how can you be doing this? Right. And I said, not only that. Right. You were very rude. Right. Because I said... If you had good manners with me, right. you wouldn't have convinced me that you're a truthful and a sincere Marxist, right, right. and then pulled out of the bag at the last moment that you're involved in some idiotic religion. <laughs> I said, this is very de deceptive of you, right. and not straightforward. Right. And I looked into his eyes at this moment, uh -huh. and he was very peaceful, yes. very relaxed. Uh -huh. And he hadn't said nothing. Had, you had said nothing. Yes. As <laughs> I had attacked him. Right. Almost as harshly as Omar al-Khattab, right. the famous Sahaba, had attacked his sister and his brother-in-law. And his brother-in-law, but my friend Injago was completely relaxed. Right. And he said to me, he said, look, he said, I know you, uh -huh. but you don't know me. Mm -hmm. He said, I see inside you, yeah. I see your button, but you don't even see me on the outside. You don't see my daughter. You're yeah. a blind man. I said, no, it's not me who's blind. It's you who are blind, and on top of that, you're also crazy. Right. And I was very rude to him. But he very peacefully bowed to me, and we were standing near the front door of my house, and he left without a word. Right. So after he left, I thought to myself, and I said, this is a very nice man, right. very intelligent man, right. but he has many emotional problems, perhaps. Right. Something has forced him right. towards this religion and of Islam, and something's forced him into prayers. Right. Maybe a human weakness. Right. Maybe the fact that it's part of his culture, and he hasn't right. been able to weed out these these elements of Islamic culture in his Senegalese personality. Right. But perhaps if I stay his friend, slowly, slowly, I can help him with his sickness of right. Islam right. and stop him from praying and right. take him out right. from the company of those who are involved in this nonsense right. and help him and purify him to be a true Marxist again. Oh, well, great. Yes. So uh, the problem was is that after that, uh, you might say that my intentions were very good for the knowledge I had, because I wanted to help him according right, to my knowledge. Right, right, right. So Allah saw my condition and saw that with the knowledge I had, I wanted to do the best thing possible. So he rewarded me, Allah, Allah he re rewarded me for my intentions. And then, the next meeting I had with this in Jagat Sisei, he, he stopped all conversation of politics completely right. and he simply began to give me arguments from the Quran yeah. without me knowing that this is Quran uh -huh. he said to me you have eyes in your head uh -huh. and you see uh -huh. have you ever doubted for the smallest instant mm -hmm. that there's one more seeing than you that there's al-basir he said you you think and you have intelligence uh -huh. you have aqal have you ever doubted for the smallest moment that there's an intelligence greater than yours uh -huh. and then he began to tell me that in all of human history yes. there's been few human beings right. their words are consistent with their actions Right. He began to speak of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how, when he's the ruler of Arabia, right. the Amir of Arabia, right. the Khalifa of Arabia, right. he was sitting on the floor and eating dates with the people and leading a very consistent life. Right. So after that discussion, I said to myself, right. uh, if I don't study something of Islam, right. not only will I not be able to help this man out, but he will even get me confused. Uh -huh and I will lose my way. Right. 